Welcome to Everyday Wine Reviews. My name is Christian and I'll be taking you on a wine tasting tour through your local grocery store wine selection. We'll be tasting everything from sweeter beginner wines to the big bold reds and even box wines. With that being said, let's pop some bottles. Today we'll be reviewing the Game of Thrones Chardonnay from, believe it or not, Westeros. Hey, where did this even come from, for Christ's sake? Central Coast. Let me just read off the uh, description for you guys, because I think you guys will enjoy this quite a bit. This is a 2016 Chardonnay from the Central Coast. From the arid climate of Dorne to the lush vineyards of the Reach, the topography of the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros is as diverse as the wine we produce. Against the backdrop of the ever-evolving struggle for the Iron Throne and amidst the howling winds of winter, nobles raise their glasses and toast to luck in the wars to come. Bottled in Seven Kingdoms Wines, Hopland, California. With that being said, here's to Daenerys. Whoo! Look at that. How stark is on the cork. So you already know what this wine's all about. Hail to the North. Now, I absolutely love this bottle, just because it brings the nostalgia from the show right to the label. You see these markings here on the outside? It shows you exactly what they show you in the opener. Now, this bottle is a Chardonnay, so you're already gonna be anticipating a beautiful uh, aroma of pears as well as green apples, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Rustros has to offer. Well, looking at it, it's got a very pale yellow color to it. It is almost green yellow. Beautiful color. I wouldn't say it's golden. More sunflower yellow. Not too thick in body. Doesn't look like it's going to be any type of fizz or it doesn't look like it's going to be a very light wine. Yes, this is a uh, very aromatic wine. Very beautiful smells coming out of it. Very strong. Right away I get like a touch of like a bite. Right when it hits my nose, like a, a nice little arr. Then it goes into a little bit of green apple. Touch of smoothness in the pear. I would say it's an underripe pear. Gala apples though. It's not like a green apple. It doesn't smell like it's going to be citrusy or too acidic. It doesn't smell like that at all, but the smell is often very deceiving from the way it actually tastes. Now there's usually a few different ways that Chardonnays are produced. Oftentimes they're known for their buttery oakiness. They're very smooth and buttery the way they wash down your throat, but the oak is like a strong woodsy flavor that is prevalent throughout that accents the green apple and pear. Traditionally though with Chardonnays you'll have what's called malolactic fermentation. Now that's a fancy word for saying that you're gonna get a lot of buttery softer notes out of it that kind of just slide down your throat. It's almost an oily effect that just flows down, but some people deviate from that and they go more towards a stainless steel approach. So when they're producing it, it's got more of a tight, a harsher green apple with a little bit more of an underripe pear. I'm really curious to see the approach that they went with this one, because Westeros seems like to me a place that's a little too harsh for them to incorporate malolactic fermentation. These are mean people, people. They do all sorts of crazy things to each other. I don't think butter is on their uh, preferences for wine in any way, shape, or form. Let's give it a try. Just kidding. My initial reaction to this is that I don't think they used any oak with it, but it does feel like there might be some malolactic fermentation going on. It seems pretty smooth. It definitely tastes like more of a gala or red apple, and it feels more like an overripe pear is incorporated to it as well. It's smooth, but it doesn't also feel like it's overly buttery. Usually when you get that buttery aspect of it, it almost feels like it's warming up the back of your throat as it goes down. But this one, there's a touch of that, but it's not overwhelming. It's nice and fresh on the front of your mouth though. It's almost prickly, but then it softens out immediately as it hits the middle of your tongue. It's a very interesting experience. I would say it's the difference between a fresh picked apple and a bite of an apple and a pear towards the back. This is a fun one. There's definitely the feel that you're getting a lot of like the apple skins to it too. It's almost like a waxy touch to it 
as it hits the middle of your mouth. When it rides back, that's kind of left behind. It's really fun because it's taking you on a journey through an apple, it feels like, but it's not overly apple juicy. The pear kind of brings that in where it's not all apple juice all day. It is more like a caramelized pear that kind of rides the whole wine through without it being overly present in the beginning. Like I said, it's like a fresh apple right on the front end of it. Nice and prickly. You're biting, chewing, chewing, and you get a little bit of that burst of flavor right when it happens. But then it rides back and it becomes a nice culmination of caramelized pear, a nice gala apple, and it rides nice and smooth to the back. A touch of warming effect, and it's not overbearing. Coming from the Seven Kingdoms, I have a lot of expectations for wines like these. I'm still waiting on Tyrion's line of wine to come out. Looking forward to that. But from what I'm getting here, Westeros and the Seven Kingdoms are on the right track. And it is a Chardonnay worth trying. It's definitely a wine to watch your favorite TV show on HBO, Game of Thrones. You can enjoy it with some cheese, lighter cheeses though. I would say Havarti or a, a nice Sauter Bellavitano. And kick back, watch Cersei ruin everything. At $14.99 a bottle, you won't be breaking the bank. You'll be enjoying some fairly decent wines coming right from your favorite kingdoms. All seven of them. Cheers.